وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم فبما رحمة من الله لنت لهم ولو كنت فضا غليظ القلب لنفضوا من حولك صدق الله العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين My dear respected listeners Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a perfect example of how to be the best human and how to be a human that will please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be successful on the day of judgment one of the features of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his personality his noble personality his perfect personality is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him rifq rifq is softness tenderness of the heart and soft speech. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a very polite person. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a very lenient person. Sayyidina Anas radiallahu an, who has stayed in the service of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam since he was a young child, he has said that I remained in the service of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for decades. And I was a young child, I used to be a young child, and many times I would do things that were against the command or the will or the wish of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam essentially would tell me to do something in a certain way and because I was a young child carefree I would do it in a different way but never ever in those decades of service the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ever even said as much to me that why did you do it like this and why did you not do it like this wow. never ever scolded me Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam although he was in the service of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam willingly so this is a feature that every Muslim is supposed to cultivate last week we had said that there's departments to our deen and there's a certain department of our deen which we do not like to talk about or unfortunately do not give enough importance to which is how to deal with people how to deal with the creations of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us with which we interact with our fellow human beings the most important the first and foremost of those is our tongue how we speak with this tongue Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it such a miraculous creation it is a very small piece of flesh but the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam tells us that when the day starts all the body organs say to this tongue that we are dependent on you and we have seen it if the tongue is harsh then other body parts if you get into a fight because of the tongue because of our, the way we speak who has to bear the brunt of the damage <coughs> our other body parts they get hit so the Prophet has told us that all the body organs as the day starts they say to the tongue that please we are dependent on you we are dependent on you if you stay straight all of us will stay straight and if you go corrupt then we'll all also go bad the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has in the teachings in the Sharia that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has brought and given to us it's so beautiful that this little piece of flesh little piece of flesh 
it can do so many good things for us things of big great magnitude the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said that very small kalimat uttered from this tongue subhanallah alhamdulillah one of them fills half the mizan half the balance of deeds on the day of judgment alhamdulillah fills the remaining half with this tongue if a muslim promises something it becomes a binding pact about which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said awfu bil uqud fulfill the pacts fulfill the promises basically fulfill the things that you say keep your promises in al ahd kana mas'ula these things that you make these promises that you make they will be asked about on the day of judgment this is not something that you can take lightly i have said something i have promised something i have said something and then i don't have to worry about it no the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam it is reported in one hadith the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam made a transaction with a sahabi and that person he said he did not have the full money at that time so he paid part of the payment to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and said that the remaining the remaining amount of money i'll go and get it and then he went and he said to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam you wait right here and then this person went and forgot for 3 days our nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam sat there and waited for him why because the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had made a promise that he would meet him here on the third day this person remembered and came back and apologized to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam imagine what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the nabi of allah said to him he said only these words you put me into difficulty you made it hard for me that is all the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that is all that is reported in that hadith may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the personality of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam say the aisha siddiqa radhiyallahu anha is reported that once a person came and before they entered our house and this is probably that time where the ahkamat the commands of uh, separation between men and women was not given yet so this person before he entered our house uh, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam warned us that this person is an is is a person who is a bad person known to be a bad person so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam warned us that beware something bad might happen he might say something that may, may offend you or something so sayyida aisha siddiqa radhiyallahu anha reports that when that man entered the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam invited him to sit down and for the whole duration that he was there the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam talked very politely with him very gently with him and when he went away we were amazed we asked the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we were surprised we said said ya rasulullah you told us before he entered that this is a such and such person yet you were so soft spoken with him the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said oh aisha do you know who is the worst in the eyes of allah subhanahu wa taala so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had told them that this is a bad person but what is he saying now that you do you know who is the worst in the eyes of allah subhanahu wa taala on the day of judgment do you know who's the worst worse than this person worse than any everybody else who's that worse worst person he said sallallahu alaihi wasallam that person because of whose harsh words because of whose stern nature people are afraid to interact with him people are people are afraid to talk to him people are afraid and scared of meeting him they avoid meeting him because such and such person is harsh of tongue he will say something that will hurt us may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from being that person This same Sayyida Aisha Siddiqa radhiyallahu anha tahira mutahhara the mother of believers may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us bless her and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the realization that she is the mother of all believers and the most the first and the foremost among the family of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam among the ahlul bayt of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam she reports that once the yahud came a group of yahud came and out of there uh na'uzu billah by way of trying to taunt the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam instead of saying assalamu alaikum they said assalamu alaikum hasha huwa kallah na'uzu billah death be upon to you na'uzu billah and this is what we should be very careful about that when we say salam which is again a act of the tongue and carries great rewards we should be careful leave your fashion leave your style aside and say assalamu alaikum properly 
the sunnah way of saying salam to somebody is assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah this is how the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would greet people assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah the same salam that we make after we complete upon completion of salah and the sunnah way to respond to it is add to it wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh this is the sunnah way of making salam and responding to salam anyway so these yahud they said assalamu alaikum death be upon to you na'udhu billah Sayyida Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu anha caught it and she was very angry and she said alaykum upon you and she said wa ghadib, ghadib allahu alaykum and the anger of Allah be upon you wa la'natullahi alaykum and the la'nat the curse of Allah be upon you radiallahu anha she had that attachment to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam every single Muslim should be willing to die for their Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said to her ya Aisha alayki bil rifq alayki bil rifq stick firmly to the softness of the heart softness of the tongue stick firmly to that and beware iyaki beware of harshness beware somebody is na'uzu billah giving this bad dua to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and what is the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam saying in return somebody is someone else is responding the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is telling her be be stick to tenderness stick to softness and beware it is very serious in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you are harsh of your heart or harsh or stern of your tongue and any bad word comes out of your mouth will fuhsh any any evil word any evil word any bad word comes out of your mouth may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said laysa al-muslimu bil ta'an wala bil la'an wala fahish wala bidhi bidhi what does that mean? That a Muslim is not somebody who accuses or taunts people. A, a, a Muslim is not somebody who speaks a bad word. So, we are here. My young friends are here as well. And young and old alike, sometimes we, act, we try to act macho. We try to act in a way that to be rough and to appear rough and to speak roughly is something that is considered an honor these days, something that you, that, that is praised, that is looked, you know, that highly upon. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was not like that. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has told us a Muslim is not like that. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was very tender, very soft, very lenient, very polite with the believers. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, very famous hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, Al-Muslimu man salim al-Muslimuna min lisani wa yadi. A Muslim is that person from whose tongue and from his ho whose hands other Muslims are safe. They feel secure that this person is never going to say a thing to us that might hurt us. Not a single bad word or a vulgar word is going to come out of this Muslim's tongue, N let alone the hands. With physically, they are never going to hurt us, and with their tongue, they are never going to hurt us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. This tongue that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us, it is so powerful, it is so powerful that with a few words, some relationships that are haram, they become halal for us. With the, the few words of this tongue, those relationships that were halal become haram for us. This, this tongue is that with which if we do backbiting, if we Na'uzubillah tell tales behind the back of a person, the Prophet ﷺ has told us that it is even severe, more severe in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than committing adultery, than committing zina. And in another hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa the words of this tongue, imagine, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has said that it is the worst form of taking interest. And the lightest form of interest is in terms of punishment or in terms of severity, like committing adultery with your own mother. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So the words of the tongue are so severe so heavy, so serious in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With these words of the tongue, a person sells his own self to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we say, La ilaha illallah Muhammadu Rasulullah, what is this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala buys their soul and everything that they have in lieu of Jannah. Bi anna lahumul Jannah. Allah is going to buy it from you, so you are putting a tag of sold on yourself. I will not be sold to this world. I will not be sold to my desires. I will not be sold to the pressures of this world. 
whatever my friends want me to do, whatever my colleagues want me to do, whatever my spouse wants me to do. No, I will do what my Allah wants me to do. I will do what my Allah wants me to do. I am already sold. I am not, I am not on the market anymore. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in the Quran with the words of the tongue. So my dear respected brothers, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us, make us realize this, that this tongue that we keep on using carelessly, this has repercussions. This has repercussions. Sayyidina Ma'az ibn Jabal radiallahu an, the beloved sahabi of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. One day he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and said, Ya Rasulullah, please tell me something that will make me enter Jannah and protect me from hellfire. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam started telling him about the basics of deen. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi told him that the first and the foremost thing is that you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without associating any partners. You establish salah, you pay zakah, you fast in the month of Ramadan, you go for hajj whenever you have the capacity. Then he said, should I also tell you the doors of goodness, which was nawafil and the great nawafil, great acts, extra acts, extra credit in simple terms, what would be that? Nafil fasting, it is going to be a protection shield for you. And paying sadaqah, it is going to eliminate your sins. And standing in prayer at the middle of the night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised such and such rewards for it. Then the Prophet sallallahu looking at his desire for more, the Prophet sallallahu said, should I also tell you about the height of deen? The height of deen is Islam and the pillar is Salah and the peak is jihad, fighting in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala against oppression. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi said something very unique, something very, very ajeeb. He said, should I also tell you that thing upon which all of these are dependent? So think about it. Your belief in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your basic faraiz, your nawafil, the height and the peak of deen, all of these, the Prophet is saying at the end, should I tell you that one thing upon which all of this is dependent? And he said, Ya Bala Ya Rasulullah, for sure. The Prophet held his tongue and said, Kuffa alayka hadha. Kuffa alayka hadha. Hold this tongue. Hold this tongue. Control this tongue. Keep this under check. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidina Ma'ad radiallahu anhu, I'll finish with this, he became surprised. He said, Ya Rasulullah, will we be answerable? Will we be asked about those things that we say with our tongue? Because living in this day and age, we know that everything is leaving an impact. But only 20 to 30, 40 years ago, we would not know, we would think that whatever we say, it goes and disappears. So Sayyidina Ma'az radiallahu anh asked there, Ya Rasulullah, will we be asked about, will we be held responsible about what we say with our tongues? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa lovingly said to him that, O oh, Ma'az, on the day of judgment, the most people who would be thrown headlong on their faces into the hellfire would be because of the things they said with their tongue. Because of the things that they said easily with their, with their tongues. May Allah subhanahu wa protect us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Always guide us and keep us steadfast on the straight path. This tongue, if we let it lose, if we let it lose, very easily, very conveniently, it can say a thing that pushes us out of the circle of Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. We start ridiculing about the things of deen. We start making fun of the things that have been told to us, given to us, commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, in authentic hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. It's very easy to kick yourself out, out of the circle of Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us those who are very, very mindful about how we are interacting with our fellow brothers, about how we are existing in this world as a Muslim, how we are appearing as a Muslim. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the realization of it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us mindful of it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create the best of effects of what was said and heard on the speaker and the Listeners, I mean, Arab and I mean, Rabbana to Kabbal Minna and the Kantasemi Radio to Ali and the Kantatawa Rahim, Wahrudan, Alhamdulillah, Rabbana, I mean, brothers who will preach the Sunnah. Please do so.